like other cloud providers, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure or OCI in short also offers managed Kubernetes, which is called as Container Engine for Kubernetes or OKE in short. Let's have a quick overview of what Kubernetes is and then we will have a look at OKE. Modern way of running applications is via containers, which package application code and its dependencies are and are portable. An application normally consists of multiple containers, ranging from handful to thousands of them interacting with each other. This interaction, or in other words, orchestration, is managed by Kubernetes. Kubernetes can be divided into two parts or planes. One is called as control plane, and the other one is on data plane. In this diagram, you can see that on the left hand side we have the control plane, whereas on the right hand side we have the data plane. The cluster control plane runs a number of processes, including Cube API servers, controller manager, and various others. Let's have a quick look at them. And just to make things a bit more clearer, the control plane manages the Kubernetes infrastructure itself, whereas the data plane holds your application. In the control plane, one of the major component is called as Cube API Server. Cube API Server is there to support Kubernetes API operations requested from the Kubernetes command line tool like kubectl. And then what happens basically is that the data plane interacts with control plane through this Cube API Server. Then we have Cube Controller Manager. The job of Cube Controller Manager is to manage different Kubernetes components such as Replication Controller, Endpoint Controller, Namespace, and various others. Another very important component is called as Cube Scheduler. The job of Cube Scheduler is to control where in the cluster to run the jobs, or in other words, on which nodes to run those jobs. Then we have something called as etcd, which is a key value store to store the whole Kubernetes cluster configuration. Cloud Controller Manager component of Kubernetes in the control plane is there to update and delete worker nodes. And it uses a node controller. It also creates load balancer when Kubernetes service of type load balancer is used. The OCI Cloud Control Manager implements a container storage interface, a flex volume and a flex volume provisioner. Okay, so that was a quick overview of the control plane. There is much more to it, but we are just having an overview here. In the data plane, we have worker nodes, which contains the containers or your application code running. Worker nodes constitute the cluster data plane. Worker nodes are where you run the application that you deploy in the cluster. Each worker node runs a number of processes, including kubelet to communicate with cluster control plane. So kubelet basically interacts with your kube API server. And then we have kube proxy running on worker node, which maintains the networking among the different nodes. Pod is the smallest unit which we can manage in the Kubernetes cluster on the data plane. Pod is where an application running on a worker node comprises of multiple containers. Kubernetes group the containers into a single logical unit, which again we call a pod. It makes it easy to manage and discover the application code or containers. Then we have the concept of services. In Kubernetes, a service is an abstraction that defines a logical set of pods and a policy through which to access them. And there are various types of services. Then we have the concept of namespaces. A Kubernetes cluster can be organized into namespaces to divide the cluster's resources between multiple users. So that was a quick overview of Kubernetes. Now let's have a look at what exactly is OKE or in other words, Oracle Kubernetes Engine or Container Engine for Kubernetes. This diagram shows a reference architecture of a Kubernetes cluster in an OCI region that contains multiple availability domains. All the resources in this topology are in a single virtual cloud network or VCN. This VCN 
in this diagram or architecture contains four subnets two public and two private ones one of the public subnet is for the passion host and the other for the internet facing load balancer of the two private subnets one is for an admin host that contains the tooling necessary to manage the k8 cluster the other private subnet is for the nodes of kubernetes cluster the internet gateway enables connectivity between the public internet and any resource in public subnets within that vcn and then we have some of the k8 or Kubernetes worker nodes. The Kubernetes worker nodes are the compute instances on which you can deploy your containerized applications. All the worker nodes in this reference architecture are in a single node pool and are attached to a private subnet. You can create multiple node pools if required. Right, okay. So let's have a look at how can we use Oracle Kubernetes engine with ATP or Autonomous Transaction Processing Database. This is the architecture where we are deploying OKE with ATP database to reliably build and deploy cloud native application. In this architecture, we are deploying OKE with ATP in a region within an availability domain and then in the fault domains. Region is simply an isolated area. Availability domains or ADs are standalone independent data centers within a region. A fault domain is a grouping of hardware and infrastructure within the availability domain. The load balancer provided by container engine for OKE provides automated traffic distribution from a single entry point to the resources in the cluster. Oracle ATP is a self-driving, self-securing, self-repairing database service that is optimized for transaction processing workload. You do not need to configure or manage any hardware or install any software for ATP. OCI handles creating the database as well as backing up, patching, upgrading, and turing the database. In this architecture, the application stores the relational data in an Oracle ATP and worker nodes of OKE interact with that database. Okay, cool. This is how we create the OKE cluster. So you simply use OCI CLI with cluster engine and then cluster create command and you mention the compartment ID, Kubernetes version and the name of the cluster. So the top command is uh, syntax, how you create it and the bottom one is the example, how you create it. It's a very simple one. If you want to update the cluster, you simply use OC, same CLI utility or CI and then with CE service and then you can update the cluster options. And the beauty of it is that once this OKE cluster is configured and provisioned and up and running, it is after that it is the same Kubernetes, Kubernetes manifest files. So all you need to do afterwards is to write the same or reuse the same manifest files for different Kubernetes resources like your deployments, your pods, your services, your, uh, your, you know, your daemon sets or whatever. And then you can use same GitOps principle to deploy those resources in the OKE. And you already, you, you can use any uh, image cluster registry with that GitOps and use those container images to deploy your deployments within that OKE cluster. Okay. Next, let's have a look at the post, uh, OKE best practices. First and foremost is Kubernetes label usage. It is recommended that you, you use Kubernetes labels to organize the many Kubernetes resources such as services, pods, containers, networks that comprise a cluster. Kubernetes labels are key value pairs that help you maintain these resources and keep track of how they interact with each other in a cluster. Next one is about resource tagging. Like any other resource in OCI or for any cloud provider for that matter, use the tagging. It is highly recommended that you use OCI resource tagging to organize the many resources such as worker nodes, your VCNs, load balancer, and block volumes. Used by Kubernetes cluster, you create with container engine for Kubernetes. When there are a large number of resources spread across multiple compartments in a tenancy in OCI, you can find it very difficult to track the resources used for specific purposes, especially when your cloud presence is growing. 
equally you can find it difficult to aggregate the resources report on them and talk and take bulk actions on them next one is about resource request and limit it is recommended that you set resource request and limit a resource request are to specify the minimum amount of resources a container can use whereas limit are there to specify maximum amount of resources the container report can use when working with the kubernetes cluster a common challenge is the occasional failure of an application to deploy in a cluster due to limited availability of resource on that cluster the failure is caused by resource request and resource limit not having been set if you do not use resource request and limit pods in a cluster can start utilizing more resources than necessary if a pod starts consuming more cpu or memory on a node then the kube scheduler might not be able to place new pod on the node and the node itself might even crash next one is about taints and tolerations it is highly recommended that you use kubernetes taints and tolerations to limit resource intensive application to specific worker nodes which have higher capacity using taints and tolerations enables you to keep node resources available for workloads that require them and prevents the scheduling of other workloads on those nodes then comes node selectors and affinity it is recommended that you control the scheduling of pods on this on nodes using kubernetes node selectors node affinity and interpod affinity using node selectors node affinity and interpod affinity enables the kube scheduler to logically isolate workloads such as by nodes hardware the last best practice is to use third party tools for backup and disaster recovery and you can use tools like Keston, Rancher, Trilio, or Valero, and there are various others too. And you can use these tools with OKE for your backup and disaster recovery. Well, I hope that this overview was of help. If you have any questions or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you.